Well done if your brain was able to bring back your knowledge from Friday about how to work out the square roots, plural, of a complex number. Um, let's have a quick look at them and we're going to use that as our uh, transition, as you might be able to tell today, into the concepts we're actually going to not just do this lesson, but actually for the next week and a half, which I hope you'll be excited about. First we're working out the roots of minus 2i and you can see our pair of roots here. Um, this one is minus 1 plus i uh, and this one is 1 minus i. Um, and when you have a look at both of these together, right, hopefully you had a look at this in the exercise already, but did you notice you're, like, you're getting this plus minus thing, right? This seems familiar. This is like when we were working out, uh, you know, in a quadratic equation when you're finding the roots and you get this plus minus thing happening just from the quadratic formula. Does that seem familiar? So you've got these kind of, you know, when you have a look at the arguments, there's a 180 degree or a pi radians difference between them, right? The other thing that I think is helpful, and um, I asked some of you to do this, but not all of you, so maybe if you haven't done this already, go and have a look at your, say, your first diagram right now. If you've got space, go ahead and put the actual number, the number we found the square roots of, put it onto your R game diagram. I reckon I can squeeze it sort of, this one is down here on this scheme, that's minus 2i. When I think about my, my two square roots, um, I think about them, I've got two ways to think about them. Number one, you can think of it as there's a clockwise square root and an anti-clockwise square root. Or you can think of it as a, there's a short one and a long one, right? There's one that gets there quicker and one that gets there longer. Um, you can see which is which, right, when I describe it that way. To get to minus 2i in the most, you know, the laziest way, um, you know, it's going clockwise, right? So therefore, you could go negative pi on 4 radians and then another negative pi on 4 radians. And of course, you also have the scaling, right? What's the modulus of our original complex number? It's, it's two, distance from the origin. And so as a consequence, the modulus of your square roots is going to be the square root of two because you need to scale and then scale again um, to get to your result, right? So the fast way for this particular number is clockwise. And then there's the long way, right? Um, if you go from the positive real axis and go around that way, what's the argument of in this way, in this scheme, Z1? What's its principal argument? Three over four pi. Three, yeah, three over four pi, three pi on four. So you can see if I went, anti-clockwise and went another 3 pi on 4, of course, well actually I should be down here, but of course you still get to the negative imaginary axis. So it's a long way around, it's clockwise. You can see the same thing for here, minus 3 plus 4i will be somewhere up here, right? So there's a, in this particular one, the fastest way is going anti-clockwise in that direction, right? Or you could go uh, anti-clockwise, like so, okay? Sorry, that was anti-clockwise the first time, clockwise a second time, all right? Okay, now rule off where that is um, done in case you uh, haven't already. And if you want to start drawing this, that'd be great. As I said, um, we're going to move from this idea of square roots into quite a few different interconnected concepts. Now, for those of you who are following along at home, for me, the most natural next step is, we've looked at square roots, but they are not the only kinds of roots that numbers can have. For example, um, you could say that the, um, I'm trying to think of a, a good one actually, um, square and a cube, I should have, a trained professional would have thought of one beforehand. Um, you could say the square root of 81 is nine. Right, you can say the square root of that is nine, but you can also say um, that for nice numbers, the fourth root of eighty-one, the number that you multiply by itself four times, is three. Right, three times three times three times three will give you eighty-one. Do you agree? So there's square roots. That was a fourth root example. Um, cube roots, and on and on and on. So generally speaking, we call these guys nth roots because it can be to any degree or any power that you like. So it's a natural transition to go from square roots, which are like the special one that we deal a lot with, um, to this general case, okay? But it turns out, as you can sort of see from the diagram, in order to get there, there's some other knowledge that we need, another sort of building block. Like you'll try and solve an equation that gets out of this and you won't be able to do it, right? And that's because we need to go a little bit back in time and talking about, talk about solving all kinds of equations that end up with complex solutions. Now, we actually could have done this much earlier on, but I wanted there to be a justification. I wanted it to be, you know, we're not just solving equations because we can, we're going to solve them because it's a bridge skill to get to something else I want to do, right? Uh, but there's two of them. So, from square roots, right, if we combine that with solving equations which have real coefficients, but they end up with complex solutions. It'll be those two skills together that you'll find next week allow us to solve 
nth roots. Um, but now that we know about square roots, there's actually another kind of equation, and we're going to deal with both of these today, that you can also solve. And that is not when you have real coefficients that lead to complex solutions, but we can actually make the coefficients of our x's and our z's, we can make those complex as well. Now, this is like very notation heavy, so it probably makes more sense if I give you an example. And we're going to do both of these together. Um, this is an example of an equation. Let me make it a bit bigger for you. All the coefficients are real. Can you see that? 5 and negative 2 and 1. Just real numbers. Okay? But when we go ahead and solve this, we're going to find that the solutions are complex. Okay? And maybe if you're having a look at this, thinking about what the discriminant will be, you'll see why. Okay? What does an equation look like when it has complex coefficients? Well, the whole idea is instead of numbers like 5 and negative 2 and 1, uh, we put in things with imaginary units and, and real units together. Um, this is going to look a bit messier because Complex numbers are a bit messier. They have these you know, different components to them. But you can see again, uh, well, our a here will be 1. Our b will be negative outside of 2 plus 6i. Uh, and then our c, our third coefficient there, our constant will be minus 5 plus 2i. So you can see here, you've got complex coefficients. You're going to get complex solutions. I should point out, there is a very, very small family of equations that have complex coefficients. But amazingly, all of the answers, all the solutions are actually real. They're very strange and unusual and not really the focus of the course. So we're going to do these two examples um, shortly together. But before we leave off this, I do want to anticipate next week uh, we're going to focus on nth roots. And we're going to do it in two kind of halves, right? The first is we're going to look at the uh, nth roots of a special complex number called unity. Um, we love giving fancy names to things, right? Um, you'll be less impressed by what unity is once we actually get there. But it is a special number, nonetheless. And then once we go from there, we're going to have a look at, well, what if we want the square roots of, sorry, the nth roots of any complex number. So like I said, we're kind of going from square roots to general nth roots. And then we go from nth roots of this special complex number to any complex number. So that's going to be our map for the next little bit. All right, now as promised, sorry, I didn't realize how light that would look on your screen. So I'm going to make this an easier to read color. Is that any better? It's a little bit better, right? Uh, let's have a look at these two 